Gina Acosta, Editor-in-Chief of Progressive Grocer, and I am excited to be joined today once again by Carol Lehman, President and CEO of Exonify, to talk about labor challenges in grocery, and oh my gosh, we have so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. Carol is the perfect person to shed light on how grocers are reimagining their labor operations. She's an award-winning thought leader with an impressive track record of successfully leading tech companies. She's also the brains behind the Exonify workforce training solution, which helps companies with recruiting, retaining, and engaging the front line. Carol, welcome once again. Thanks, Gina. Great to be back. So it's been a little bit since you and I have chatted, um, and I know I've asked you this question before, but I have to ask you again, just talk to me, Carol, about what the staffing challenges are in grocery right now, you know, heading into the fourth quarter, into next year and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I, it's the same as what we talked about last time. It's that competition for talent uh, is just unprecedented. It's, it's at a rate that has never before been seen. And a lot of it is wage inflation driven. Um, traditional grocers are just competing with big box stores and other kinds of stores that have higher margins because they have non-food items to sell. And so uh, that competition is just absolutely crazy. And then because of retention challenges, it has a waterfall impact in that there's limited bench strength in management and specialty positions. So it goes beyond just the short-term problem of having too few people on the front line to run the business. Um, grocers are also facing long-term talent gaps in various roles and various uh, levels of the business. The pipeline is shrinking or narrowing or <laughs> disappearing exactly. in some cases, right? Exactly. Um, so, okay, Carol, what would you say are the key factors in turnover for grocery retailers right now? Well, I would say two things. Um, first is the onboarding experience and uh, onboarding, you know, that first experience that the associate has with the organization can leave them feeling great or it can leave them feeling really disconnected from the company and the management in the store that they work. And so this can be as simple as just how they're introduced to other team members or the training that they receive when they join. And are they given the time to learn the job that they've been hired to do? Or do you just send them out solo? Do you know if they have the confidence to do the job? Because what we know is if, if they don't have confidence, they won't act in the way that you need them to. And so that onboarding experience, utterly critical. And then wages are also a challenge um, affecting turnover because you, know, you hire somebody and then two days later, they get another job offer from some somebody else paying them a dollar more per hour. So yeah. engaging them immediately is critical. Okay. So perfect segue to talking about retention, which is really what I wanted to, to focus on in this discussion with you today. Um, what are some of the biggest trends that you are seeing when it comes to retention specifically? Yes. Interestingly, um, we're seeing hiring bonuses, which have been um, prevalent in non-grocery or non-frontline uh, sorts of positions, but hiring bonuses that are contingent on that new person staying for a period of time before they can claim the bonus. So um, that's been interesting to see that now come into frontline. Also, some of the better grocers are extending training time and assigning buddies to support the learning curve and to help build confidence. Um, the second thing is better communication immediately from leaders directly, as well as using technology. Um, third, on-demand pay is starting to become standard. So especially within the larger employers, what's becoming very prevalent is the ability for the employee to access their pay immediately without waiting for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then finally, education benefits. We're also seeing a big trend to allowing the employee to access low or no cost in some cases degrees uh, and that becoming part of the standard benefit package for frontline workers. Interesting. Very interesting. A lot of stuff to, uh, a lot of trends to unpack there. Mm -hmm. um, so how can grocery retailers, in your opinion, uh, retain employees and reduce all of this turnover? Well, we about that. yeah, Those, yeah uh, for sure. Benefits. 
Yeah, for sure. Again, you know, this is all changing, um, you know, really rapidly, but what those employers are really uh, starting to realize is they need to make operational changes, communication, training, support, allowing time for those individuals to learn on the job, and also having more than a short-term view, but giving a clear path for advancement and career progression for the individual. That, that's the first thing, those operational changes. Also, um, eliminating friction. You know, there's so many parts of the job that are easy, so just make them easy. For example, let them swap shifts without requiring manager approval, post the schedules a couple of weeks in advance so people can actually coordinate their lives, um, do things that just eliminate simple things that create friction. Also, recognize people for their effort. Uh, again, something really prevalent in non-frontline employers, they celebrate success as a team. So why wouldn't you do that in the grocery world? Um, and make sure managers are recognizing and coaching employees and not just getting bogged down in the operational tasks and administrative tasks they have to do. Often cross-training, you know, again, train people on how to do multiple jobs, not only does it help them make the work more interesting and give them career progression and possibly pay progression, but it helps you as the employer um, know where and when to schedule people who have different skills. And then finally, you know, don't ask yourself, why are people leaving? Turn that around and ask yourself, why would people want to work here? It puts a really different lens on how you think about really enabling and creating that place people want to come and then stay. Perfect. That is that is so perfect. That's that's it makes perfect sense. Um, so let's talk about day one, right? So what should grocery retailers do to ensure that a new hire is set up for success from day one? Um, yeah, great question. And really, it comes down to setting clear expectations. Again, that kind of idea of frictionless, everybody has questions. So make sure that the most frequently asked questions that you get all the time from those people you hire have easily accessible answers. And give them the path to how they, um, you know, operate day in and day out very, very simply. Where are the schedules? Where are the training plans? When are you going to be expected to work on your own? So set those expectations up front, which will bring the anxiety and the temperature down and then allow people the room to really learn and grow as they start. Also, you know, I mentioned this a moment ago, connecting a new hire with a peer trainer who can guide them through that process also helps with setting them up for success. Just don't leave them on their own. Interestingly, you know, making sure supplies and resources are ready to go day one is something that more often than we think doesn't happen. So things like, you know, if they've got to wear a uniform, mm -hmm. uh, equipment that they need to use, name tags they need to put on their uniform. Um, a lot of a lot of organizations don't have those things ready. And, you know, nothing says you're just a number like not having those things prepared and ready to go when the new person arrives. Right. Make sure managers introduce themselves you know, um, early, check in frequently, um, make themselves available for questions, uh, give those new employees access to the information I mentioned, don't leave them guessing. And again, you know, celebration, celebrate people who join, um, you know, connect them to other people. One of the things that we know is that job satisfaction is often related to or correlated with friendships that people have with other team members. So Absolutely. give them the opportunity to do that too. And uh, and those employees will have a, a bigger chance of staying. Wow, those are some wonderful tips, Carol. So last question, I'm dying to talk to you about this because I know that you've been really busy with your new acquisition of the Nudge technology. So last question is, you know, how can technology help grocery retailers uh, improve retention in grocery? 
Yeah, um, th thanks for mentioning that, Gina. You know, one of the reasons that we acquired Nudge was to give more technology opportunity to solve different problems in the life of that employee. And really technology is there to remove obstacles, not introduce them. So finding information at work, as I mentioned, should be super, super easy. Uh, giving them that go-to place for schedules, training, FAQs, product details, messages, assignments, things like that. Um, you know, it's just a no brainer in today's world and giving them that opportunity on any device that they may want to use, including their personal devices, um, is a way that technology is being really smartly deployed in grocery today. And if they don't want to do that, or they don't have their own device, make it really, really uh, simple powerful technology that's easily accessible to them when they come to work, during the shift, uh, in multiple languages, doesn't require instruction to use. Again, all of those things are ways to employ technology. Um, you know, it's all available today and grocers really need to think deeply about how they leverage what's available to them to create that experience for the employee, giving them the best chance at retention. Carol, it is always an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Gina. Always a pleasure to be here.